hello everyone. Uh, I am the Jurassic Narc, and this will be the beginning of Jurassic World Breakdown. This will be the first episode. Please uh, like and subscribe, and you can leave me a comment if you'd like me to break down uh, a movie of your own suggestion. Otherwise, we're going to just keep rolling with what I have planned. And without further ado, let's begin. So it opens up um, with a, a, a bright light, or, you know, like, don't go into the light. Then we see a shell. So the shell is likened to a portal, or I'd say, uh, if you're familiar with CERN, it's CERN trying to open the portal. So a hand comes through, but stalls and struggles. So also in the opening, you can see that uh, C and W. So C is the third letter of the alphabet, so there's the three. And then W on its side is 33. So right here, is, they're already telling you who, uh, who approved the making of this movie, who's in charge. Then as the scene progresses, we see a second egg. And it literally starts to eclipse the first egg. As though the portal is able to be used every four years during a solar eclipse. And then through the portal is an eye looking into our world. It reminds me of the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. And then as we get a close-up on the eye, uh, we start to get a bright light. As though the entrance was successful, and they're now in our world. Then we get a scene change, and we get an up-close of a reptilian foot. But it's a bird. So the reason it's a reptilian foot is one, two, three, and uh... Its skin is almost looking like scales. So it's a bluebird. You th you, for, firstly, we get the close-up of the would-be reptilian foot, but it's a bird. So it's a blue bird. So you got the blue masculine, and then you have the red coat on the feminine. So the bird is ascending, the masculine takes action, it flies away, the feminine stays put, it remains at the home. In this next scene, we see that there's two different types of reptilian races. This one has a horn, and this one we can't see if it has a horn or not. So it's the implication that there's interspecies wars going on, like a wolf pack, wolf pack mentality. So a wolf pack mentality is they'll kill the prey, and then they'll fight amongst themselves over the meal. And, in my opinion, that's what's going on here. There's more than one type of reptilian race and different breeds. They don't all get along. Then, as the scene progresses, you see up here, Pixel, or Pixel. And I look at this as, like, uh, uh, pay paying homage to Pixar, except it's Pix Pixel. So Parallel is a planet poster saying that he came from the stars or he came from another planet or they did. Hours. Then in this dialogue between the mother and the son, you can see again that he's in the blue masculine and she's wearing the red feminine. He says Dane County Airport is 36 minutes away. So 36 minutes away, 3666. Then, as just a joke, she's saying, did you feed the monster under your bed? Acknowledging fairy tales, showing that they know what's up, very subtly. Monster under your bed? Yes. So now the door, the white door closes. Sorry about that. How many of those? Feed the monster under your bed? Yes. So now the white door closes. And you see here, um, Asia is completely whited out, and you only see America, the Western countries, really. So I feel they're paying homage to Monsters, Inc. You also get a, um, where is it? A 
fast forward a little bit. You get a, a Beats advertisement right here. Just like how they uh, sneak cans of Pepsi into movies and television shows for commercials. You're going to have so much fun. I love you. He has a G on his shirt right here. It's kind of like blatant in our in our face. Like this movie was very... Um, I, I don't want to say easy because I still had to point these things out and write them down. But very nonchalantly just giving the message in our faces and it's only if you know what to look for do you really see that they're like wow like they're just plastering this everywhere right here love you too very subtle but her hand makes the m sign up here very subtle b gates a gate c gate a gate b gate c gates so bill gates he's in on it Again, you see the G on his shirt, Mason. You hold these, please. And then before the boys uh, leave to get on the plane, she says, and remember, something chases you, run. Or how to handle encounters with cryptids, how to handle encounters with reptilians, how to handle encounters with monsters in general. Human beings are weak, comparatively speaking. Really, all we can do is run. And even then, sometimes we can't, we can't outrun them. We definitely are not physically stronger than them. So now they land off the, uh, in Costa Rica, and now they're going to be taking a boat. Big. But how many pounds? So here... You got the blue and the white, like Lacerta said, this is the sign of their royalty. This is their branding. Isla Nublar. This is kind of an anagram for Anubis Lair. Again, maybe I'm reaching here, but it seems accurate. I Isla Nublar is an anagram for Anubis's Lair or the Island of Death. Then, again, very subtly in the dialogue... He says, now they have 14 herbivores and 6 carnivores. 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, and if you flip the 6 upside down, you get 9-11. Boom, boom. Now you see who's in charge, creation and destruction. So as he's talking to his brother, and he's sharing this important knowledge about cryptids and of what's going on in the world, but a lot of people are just not interested in... They're not interested in what... He, is really going on and they're only interested in empty base pleasures so like we can see in this scene his brother is just preoccupied with the pretty girl again they're flexing the G Right there in our, in our face. G is also uh, numerology for God. Seven is a holy number. Okay. Now right here, you see the ascension of the ladder or the escalator. Going through the two pillars of Joachim and Boaz. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's all right. You see his shoes. The boys are normal, poor people. The clothing shows it. The children are drawn here by the wow factor. You see three, three, three above the door, or really just 33, 33. One o'clock. Can he slow down? Come on! 
Now you see children ascending the pillars. Children's sacrifice. Then for the final scene, it zooms in on the landscape. It shows landscape like into Egypt. You see like the Mediterranean over here, the sand as well. And in the background, you have the pyramid. You also have the water flowing through as though it's the Nile. So is this to say that these reptilians, this race has been around since Egypt, since before then? And then for the final scene, it zooms in on top of the pyramid. As those to say, they have the knowledge, they're at the top, and they're in charge. And then to complete this episode, it zooms in on this base in the back. So as though this is the forefront of what's going on over here on this side. And then back in the corner, tucked in, high, hidden away in the darkness, is where they actually reside. And that will conclude this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.